Greetings, viewer. ETCG1 here, also known as Eric the Car Guy in some circles. And this is a video response to the hybrids video uh, that I posted recently. Uh, there was an enormous amount of comments and response to that video. I love it. So I am doing my first ETCG1. Is this my first ETCG1 RV video? Not really sure, but. Here I am rambling on when I should be just getting right to the point. A lot of you brought up some great, great points about uh, the discussion about hybrids. Some of you actually own them and say that, you know, they work really well for you. Others have very strong opinions about hybrids in general and would like to see them go away. And there was a huge majority of people that talked about diesel. And a lot of those people I suspect were from Europe, even though the country of origin was not listed. Uh, and, and I can see that because, uh, at least from what I know, Europe's been pursuing diesel for quite some time. And I think what happened here in the U.S. is back in the 70s, um, not to name any names, <coughs> General Motors <coughs> kind of killed it for everybody in that they uh, took regular gasoline V8 engines and just converted them over to diesel engines. This was an epic fail. And I think it really turned Americans off to the whole diesel market, or I think we would be driving a lot more diesel vehicles today uh, had that not occurred. But, you know, we're innovators. We try things. Doesn't always work? Well, you know, you know. So a lot, a lot of those uh, vehicles that had those special diesel engines came back into dealerships and had them swapped out for standard gasoline engines, and everybody was happy. And we just decided or at least seem to decide just not to talk about diesel anymore after that, other than, you know, the, the foreign makes uh, to the U.S., but a lot of German, a lot of rabbits uh, that came in, a lot of Mercedes. Um, I'm actually considering getting a diesel for my next project car uh, outside of the whole Subaru thing, uh, just for this very reason. They are quite popular, and they do get really great gas mileage, if you want to call it gas. <laughs> Should we call it diesel mileage? Not real sure. My entire point was not so much speaking to hybrids themselves, but more to the fact that there was a lawsuit that was brought up against Honda for selling a product that apparently did not do what it was advertised to do. Also, several of you brought up the fact that it's the EPA that dictates the fuel mileage or gets those fuel mileage ratings and not the manufacturer. The thing that got to me is it seemed like that there was a lot of big business that was involved and they were able to step in and say, you know what, we're not going to open this can of worms. We're going to avoid this whole situation altogether. I personally don't know exactly what happened with that whole situation, but the end result is, is that she, her decision was overturned. And to me, that's disturbing as a, as a consumer because if I purchase something and expect it to be, you know, to perform a certain way and it doesn't live up to those perform that, that advertised performance, I'm going to have issue with that. And that, that was kind of at the core of the last video. But we seem to have, have sort of splintered off into a discussion about hybrids and how they work and, you know, uh, fuel costs. That's another thing uh, some of you brought up. You brought up about fuel costs not necessarily being dictated by supply and demand. This is true, but I also said shortly after that that there's a lot of complicated things that go into the price of fuel uh, depending upon your location and a lot of things. And then some of you brought up the whole thing where, you know, who knows how long it's going to be before fossil fuels wear out. There's still fossil fuels out there, they're just more difficult to get. All that aside, okay, I would say that there is a fuel problem and getting back to the whole supply and demand thing, what I was getting at was places like India and China with a growing population of drivers, people using up more of that resource. I'm gonna say that that resource is gonna have a higher demand and a lower supply because of that. That's just, to me, that just is common sense. So if there's more people wanting the same thing, there's gonna be less of that thing to go around, therefore the price of that thing's gonna go up. Set aside any of the other political, financial things that go on in the world. Where does this leave us? This leaves us in a place to where we need to come up with some kind of solution. And are hybrids the solution? I don't know. I think they're a step in the right direction. I also like diesel. Uh, it's an existing technology, it's proven technology, it works with a lot of the existing everything that we have. You know, come on. It's speaking to the argument of, you know, the older cars getting as good a gas mileage as today's vehicles, 
A lot of you pointed out that uh, modern vehicles have a lot more safety equipment on them, other systems that have put, been put onto them that increases their weight and thus compromises their fuel economy. Conversely, I would say that they've also worked a great deal on the aerodynamics and done a lot of things to try and make those cars as light as possible. Uh, to me, it seems like we've hit this plateau as far as you know, gasoline burning engines. Uh, there are other things that are out there besides hybrids. There are a lot of people, a lot of smart people, working on several different solutions to this problem. And I, I like this discussion because this brings it to the forefront. It's not something we're just gonna forget about because we as technicians are gonna have to deal with this as well because when the general public starts driving vehicle X, we're gonna have to learn how to fix it because it's gonna break. I'll tell you, no matter what it is they come up with, it's gonna break. And technicians of the world, we're gonna have to deal with it. So, you know, I at least have a vested interest in knowing what's out there and knowing how those things work because uh, as I said in other videos, I'm a big proponent of automotive education because you need to be aware of those systems. You need to know how they work in order to service them. It's just, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to just magically pick up the wrench and know what to do. I mean, working on a hybrid is not like working on a, a regular internal combustion type setup. So th there are other things that come into play here. But once again, I like this discussion. Uh, bring it on. Uh, I'm welcome to, to comments down below about what your feelings are on this topic. And the question I'm going to put to you now is, okay, so if not hybrids, or if hybrids, if, if you're a hybrid owner and, and you love driving it, in fact, uh, many of you also pointed out that hybrids work extremely well in urban situations. And mainly that's because, like, say you're stopped in traffic or stopped at a stoplight, that engine is off. Nothing's running. You're just sitting there. The, the car is off. You hit the gas, you start to move. So that is a huge advantage over even diesel-powered vehicles because with a diesel-powered vehicle, if you're stuck in traffic or sitting in a stoplight, it's still running, it's still burning a certain amount of fuel. And over time, that, that fuel consumption will add up to basically wasted energy. Whereas hybrids, I think, are a step in the right direction in the sense that they offer a solution to that sitting and idling. We could take it a step further and say, if we deal with the traffic issues, then we're dealing with you know having to sit in traffic if you're not sitting in traffic you don't have to worry about that as much and i'm going to say something that ooh, a lot of you uh <laughs> may not like and, uh, and i think a big part of our solution moving forward personally is public transportation i think a better public transportation system hear me out kids today we'll call them kids today uh don't really care about their cars as much as they did back in the day. They aren't as important. They aren't, at least in a, here in the States, they aren't rushing out to get their driver's license. They're not as interested in the whole thing. Uh, they're more, if, in fact, I think they did a study and they said, uh, they, they asked a bunch of teenagers, what, would, what could you not live without, your car or like your smartphone? And just about everybody said their smartphone. They weren't worried about the car because they could find transportation. This is why I think you know it's kind of ripe for looking at a good public transportation system in the United States. You have stellar public transportation systems in Europe and Asia. Uh, I think if we did something like that here, if you move a large group of people from point A to point B, you're, you're saving fuel in essence. Uh, no matter what means of propulsion you're using, you know whether you're making you're burning coal to make the electricity. So what? You're moving, you know, 200 people as opposed to two down the highway. So there are a lot of pros and cons. Another thing I brought up about hybrids was the, uh, the batteries and the production of those vehicles. The production of a hybrid vehicle is actually a very dirty process. And I think somebody pointed out that driving a Land Rover Discovery over the course of its entire life could not pollute as much as the production of one Prius because of what it takes to make those batteries and, and nickel mining and those kind of things that are very dirty processes in order to create a clean vehicle. So it's, it's a holistic approach we need to take to this, to this whole problem, and then it's not just gonna be solved by saying, uh, I hate hybrids. <laughs> it, there, there's gonna have to be some solution there because I think down the road, we're gonna be faced with this very thing. So back to my question, and that is to you, if not hybrids, what is your solution to transportation needs in the future? Because we also wanna do what we're doing. Uh, but it looks to me like we're going to be doing it differently, and that's change. That's just part of life. It's going to happen. So if you were the guy <clears throat> or girl 
to come up with a solution and say, this is what we should do, what should we do? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. You can also find me there. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Let's talk about it. See you later.